Welcome to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Aman Shah. I'm here at ESMO with Dr. Monty Pal, the Editor-in-Chief of uh, our RCC Center of Excellence. Welcome, Monty. Pleasure to be here, Aman. So, uh, Dr. Tony Schwery presented data on uh, a subgroup analysis of uh, patients who had a sarcomatoid histology and they were treated by avalumab plus either axitinib or zunitinib. What can you tell us about this study? So, you know, this subset analysis is a really important one. We saw some data for sarcomatoid populations with axitinib and pembrolizumab presented at ASCO of this year. And this really re reiterates the theme that with axitinib and avelumab, you can get very deep and protracted responses and even get some complete responses in this very aggressive histology. Yeah, so yeah, let, let's back up a bit. Yeah, could you tell us about this histology, you know, for the community oncologist who maybe does not see a lot of R RCC? Uh, how does a sarcomatoid histology differ from the more commonly seen ones? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question, Amon. You know, we've been all over the map in terms of our management of sarcomatoid disease. At a very fundamental level, it implies that these are rapidly growing tumors. They tend to be very, very poorly differentiated under the microscope. And if you date back our therapies just about 10 years, we were using chemotherapy in these patients. Oh. ECOG actually ran a study, ECOG 8802, of adriamycin and gemcitabine, showed really abysmal response rates on the order of around 20%, but that represented the standard at the time. Okay. We then slid into using TKIs, and now thankfully we've got some really promising data with either IO-IO or VEGF plus IO. And that was my next question. So which one would you do? Would you go with the IO-IO or would you go with the VEGF and IO? Uh, and, and how would you make that decision? Uh, Great question. So for sarcomatoid disease, I've got to say I'm probably more of an IO-IO guy, if you will. Um, the response rates that we're seeing there are just remarkable um, on the order of 50 to 60 percent, in fact, higher than what we see in a conventional population. And the proportion of complete responses is actually higher, which is really striking to me. Um, on the other hand, when we look at the TKI and IO combinations, and Tony's data from this meeting reinforces this, you see a complete response rate on the order of around 5% or so. So it's good, and seeing a complete response is always something that we should herald, um, but it's not quite as good as what I perceive the data for IO plus IO to be. Okay. And are there any uh, markers that might help guide your decision? I believe PDL1 is not as good a marker in uh, RCC, but maybe tumor mutational burden. Are there any markers which might send you one way or the other? Sure. Well, this is really a place where I've got to give Tony Chuari a ton of credit. He's really been just an amazing driver in the Javelin study of getting biomarker work done and getting it done fast, frankly. Um, so at ASCO of this year, he presented some very elegant work looking at an RNA-seq-based signature. He honed down to eight genes that seemed to predict the prognosis and outcome with the combination of therapies. And I think I would look to some of these gene signatures, the things we might be implementing clinically down the line. So it sounds to me that for the community oncologist, if you have a patient with sarcomatoid histology, if you can send that person to a major center or a trial, you're probably best off. Is that where we are? You know, on a multiple choice test, a clinical trial is always the right answer. <laughs> well, uh, that's, a, that, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. Pleasure.